Hey YouTube, I am Tiberius and you're about to watch an edited recording of a Twitch stream. You can check out my Twitch using the link in the video description. If you enjoy the content, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. Thank you and enjoy the video. This is like very basic stuff. This will actually come in useful for a lot of CTFs actually. So this is actually a pretty good one to do. Uh, verbose error message reveal is using a vulnerable framework, a vulnerable version of third-party framework. Obtain and submit the version number of the framework. Okay, cool. Information disclosure and error message is extremely common. Almost every single test I'm on, there will be some form of information disclosure. And how you search for it generally is kind of like a manual fuzzing you submit you submit things that you really sh like that don't make any sense right so in this case like a product id of one right so what happens if you submit a product id of a oh look a number format exception because java was expecting a number and we gave it a letter other things that would work, probably one followed by an apostrophe. Yep. Or one followed by a double quote. Or to be honest, one followed by absolutely anything that's not a number. We'll generate a number format exception. And in this case, here's the vulnerable version. Now, obviously, the, the key thing here is the application didn't catch this error. So ordinarily what you would do is you would have a try catch block to deal with unexpected inputs. And if a number format exception was generated, the application would catch it and spit out a generic error message like that's not a number or invalid ID or something instead of this. So do we just have to submit the solution? <laughs> okay, very simple. You can find that in a number of different ways. Like you, the fuzzing we did earlier with Intruder would work. But generally speaking, if you... Generally, when I ever see a number being used in an application, I'll just submit a letter instead or I'll submit the number followed by some weird character. <laughs> Just to see what the error messages are. Okay, debug pages. Not so common, but common in CTFs. So, debug pages obviously should not be enabled in production. So, I imagine it's either going to be... Yeah, okay. So there's a link in the source code. Otherwise, it could have been at like slash debug, or again, it could be giving it a weird character, can generate errors, and can also generate debug logs sometimes. Uh, but in this case, it, it was literally a comment, which you can actually find sometimes. Like, it'll be a, like a default comment to tell developers where the debug pages uh submit the secret key oh i accidentally didn't even do it in uh burp suite okay very easy stuff we've done on the stream before looking in source code for urls etc pretty simple Backup files. In a hidden directory, okay. So this one might require a little bit of effort. We may have to find a hidden directory, which we can obviously just use Ferox Buster for. But let's put it into Burp Suite and also have a look in the source code just in case. Okay, nothing there, but 
does this work? Invalid product ID if I do an A. No. Okay. Was there anything on this page? We've got resources. I guess we could technically go and do something like look in the resources directory. There was resources slash images. Nothing. There was this. We go back, just keep going up one directory. Um, nothing there. Okay. The other thing we could check is robots.txt, obviously. Oops. Oh, there we go. Disallow backup. So, Ferrox Buster would have found it. I do run Ferrox Buster on engagements. But here we go. We have. I also, by the way, I look for one of my, when I'm doing Ferrox Buster against real websites, um, I have a massive list of extensions that I'll use. Dot .back is one of them. Uh, .bckp is another one. So there's a lot of various backup names you can have. It looks like we need to submit the password, right? Yep, submit the database password. I'm going to assume most people are understanding this because honestly, yeah, this is stuff we've done on the stream many, many times before. All right, let's do this one. Yeah, authentication bypass via information disclosure. Okay. Thank you for following. Thanks for following uh, Zohamza Ox. Okay. <laughs> okay, what was this one? Uh, okay, so we have... Uh, okay, Labs Administration Interface has an authentication bypass, impractical to exploit without knowledge of a custom HTTP header used by the front end. To solve a lab, obtain the header name, and use it to bypass the lab's authentication. Okay. Uh, Wiener and Peter. Here's the password. Okay, so if we just go to admin and available local users. All right, so one thing we could try, it's very old, but if you use the trace, yeah, okay, this is the way you do it. <laughs> so trace doesn't really work much anymore, but the idea of trace is if you send a request and you set the method the http method to trace if the server accepts it what it should do is send you back the request headers or the actually the entire request to be honest uh that it received okay it's kind of like almost like a debug but the reason why this is bad and why it's disabled all the time now is because you don't, you won't generally get this back anymore, right? You send all these headers, you'd expect to get these all back, but there are multiple servers between you and the web server these days. And some of those servers add headers to track stuff. And so not only will you get these headers back, you'll get other headers that were added. And in this case, there's this X custom IP authorization header. means if we add it here and then do 127001 and send the trace again oh look it didn't change so what we can probably do now is just get admin and indeed we can and then we can just use delete Carlos
I believe that solves it. Yeah. So the information disclosure thing there is the fact you could use trace, which again, you should check for, but it's very rare that it works these days. On the screen are my socials. Please follow me on Twitter, join the Discord server, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, follow me on Twitch to get alerted when I go live. You can also find all these links in the video description.